Good evening and welcome to live coverage of the Junior Bundesliga. We've got the semi-finals for you, the second leg action, and it's a big Revere derby as well. The mini one, it's Borussia Dortmund under-19 versus Schalke under-19 at the Stadion Rota Erde. So we're looking forward to an absolute thriller here after a first leg which ended 2-2. Looking at the Schalke team here as it was a thrilling comeback from Schalke. 94th minute with the equaliser in that first leg. Borussia Dortmund were on top for long spells of the game, but they slipped up right at the end, having scored a follow-up penalty from Raschel on 20 minutes and Aydanel scoring a free kick on 64. Chan scored a penalty on 37 for Schalke before it was Biskup who had the sting in the tail. So I'll try and keep you up to date as well with what's going on in the other semi between Wolfsburg and Stuttgart. That's all square at the moment. And should this end all square tonight, as in the first leg, we will go direct to a penalty shootout. So the big names are in the Stadion Rotaire today. You see Hans-Joachim Watzke, the chairman of Borussia Dortmund, as the two teams enter the fray so for Borussia Dortmund a bit of a surprise for them as their top scorer Emre Aydanel who's got 17 goals this season is not starting he's on the bench for Schalke pretty much as you would expect with Biskup in there and Kutuchu Kutuchu is their top scorer and we're looking forward to a thrilling game here this semi-final, the winner will take their place in the final on the 2nd of June. And that will take place in either Gross Asbach or Wolfsburg, depending on how Wolfsburg do in that other game tonight against the defending champion Stuttgart. And these two sides reached here as Schalke topped the Bundesliga vest table. A point above Borussia Dortmund, which was a big shot coming in on the last day with Dortmund topping the table for much of the season before slipping up on the final day. And Dortmund reached this stage as well last season, but slipped up to Hertha Berlin, who won it as well against Schalke. And, well, Dortmund... Have a far better scoring record this season, scoring 64 times compared to Schalke's 46. Schalke like to keep it tight. Dortmund, much more open side. But down the years, these two at this level have played each other 32 times, with Schalke coming out on top 17 times. Dortmund winning on eight occasions. And this season... Dortmund won away from home 4-1 with an Aydanel hat-trick back in August before Schalke won here with a Chan penalty for 1-0. And of course there was that 2-2 thrill at the other day in the first leg of this semi-final. It looks as though we're just about ready to go here. And away we go. It is Borussia Dortmund with the possession from the off. Long ball down the field there. Should be easy enough for Schalke to pick up here. Tiao got it clear. And the ball over the top. And that's an easy one for Havre look to pick up. As for Schalke, their coach Norbert Elgert. He's the local legend in charge. He's been in charge since 1996, except for one season as the assistant coach in the first team uh, there's a foul coming in and already you can see the needle between these two teams even though I would describe it as the mini Revere Derby this is a big one you can see that the stadium full as well 
with fans as it's just Peña Zauner who's getting a ticking off there in the opening minutes. We'll have to try and calm down. And Schalke incredibly successful at this level. They've never been worse than second in the Bundesliga vest since 2011. And they won the thing overall, 2006, 2012 and 2015. As there will be the first corner of the game earned by the team in black and yellow. So it's Osterhage to take as the ball comes in and cleared by Schalke. And the ball running out of play on this near side. Oh, so far so good after two minutes as there we see El Getz. Long throw down the wing there. Pressure on the ball here from Bizong. Almost sending the player Rima down there and this time getting his revenge. And well, it looked as though Rima was going to come and have something to say about that, but then put his arms up immediately to show he wasn't ready for a shoving match with Bizong. It was quite a unit. It wasn't really a foul, you'd have to say. Did get a nudge on the ball there. Schalke have the free kick here on the halfway line. Good chance here for Dortmund to go forward again. Pinitzana on the right-hand side. He looks to be the one that they'll be looking for for some creativity. And this is Knob. Back to have a look in goal. Ball clear. It's picked up by Smolinski. Just a bit of a heavy touch though, and it is back to him again. Just trying to lift it forward. For the number nine Biscup. As we're into the fifth minute, it remains goalless. Remember, after that 2 2 draw away from home, he was actually played in Oberhausen rather than in Gelsenkirchen. Fayani got the ball clear, but only to the halfway line. This is now Tiao. Chan, the captain, Up towards the left-hand side. And there you can see the Schalke fans enjoying this one away from home on a Monday evening. Rachel picking up possession, just trying to direct operations from deep alongside Osterhage. Again, it's at Smolinski with the interception here. And there's a little bit of loose passing early on. A little bit hectic in this semi-final. Uh, that's a long diagonal ball out towards Kerr on this left-hand side. And Kerr getting it back again and knocking it the other side and Great bit of pace there. Now Bazong trying to make something of it, just battering his way through. And the shot in the end came from Peña Zauner. And I think he would have been better off leaving it to Bazong, who deserved his opportunity to pull the trigger, having used his strength to get that far. And as we see a late challenge coming in there. And the referee, well, he's. Just waving the player over here. As 
we see the coach for Dortmund there, Benjamin Hoffman. He'll be replaced in the summer by Michael Skipper. That's no slight on him. He's been promoted to that position temporarily. And will revert back to his original role as the coordinator of the other age groups in the summer with Skipper coming in. So the referee so far has been fair here as we see a barnstorming run from Merchan. And almost the perfect cross coming in for Yildiz. Goodness me, Schalke here have opened this game rather well. And the player going down again was Merchan. But nothing given by the referee. As I said, he's been strong in this game so far. Uh, seven minutes have gone and the away side currently on top. Dortmund, you would have to say, would be favourites having got the score draw away and playing at home in this second leg. But at the moment, it's not turned out that way as Biskup is the man who's just offside there. Well, despite the nature of the goalless draw so far, it has been a thriller. As we see a rather hopeful appeal there, in my opinion, from Merchant. Well, it's going to be a penalty shootout in the other semi-final we're hearing between Wolfsburg and Stuttgart. For the right to get into the final. Try and keep you up to date with what's going on there. And there's Osterhage just feeding it inside. And Raschel outside of the right boot. Nice and confident to miss now. Shifts it onto his left and curling the ball in. And a great opportunity for Bazong there. Um, just nodding it past the near post. Well, he is a surprise that he's in the starting lineup, but he's certainly made a nuisance of himself in these opening few minutes. Everyone would have been expecting Aydinal in. Perhaps the coach Hoffman just thinking that he can run the defenders ragged and then Aydinal can come on with the finishing touch later in the game. So these players, of course, will be hoping to make the breakthrough into the first team. A number of the Schalke players, especially like Kutuchu, do have experience of being in with the senior side. And the summer could be all changed for them. That's when they could be promoted to the first team squad. Back to have a look again. Well, Ibrahim and forward to Bazong. Again on the run. Well, once he gets going, there's nothing stopping him. As the ball is in quickly, and that's Borussia Dortmund who have just taken the chance here to get on top. It just looks as though they've just taken the sting out of this game that was there initially from Schalke the ball out to the right bit of a miscommunication there Inyazona is taking the run on he said he would like to play for Venezuela at national level rather than Germany as the ball is nodded down the left here for Schalke and then that's good defending just to knock it back to the keeper have a look now Misna have a 
Bank again. Just under a little bit of pressure there from Merchan, but got it safely clear. And up towards Bizong. Champala in goal for Schalke with the long, long, long clearance upfield. It was a nice and confident kick from him. Smolinski now Kutuchu. What can he do here? He's just trying to turn inside and is he brought down? Yes, says the referee. Right on the edge of the box there by Misna. Well, we haven't seen too much of Kutuchu so far. But suddenly on 12 minutes, he was brought down. Indeed, that is the correct decision. Just outside the 18 yard box. And they're in deep discussion here. Could be pressure here for Havreluk. Who's going to strike this here? Are they going to cross it in? Are they going to go for goal directly? Chan seems to be lining this one up somehow. Katuchu maybe just to cross it in. Let's have a look. Where is Chan to smash it? And it ends up about a foot wide of the goal. Decent attempt there from the captain. Good idea as the goalkeeper Havrilok was guarding more than near post, rather. And he would have been completely unsighted as well had it just crept in towards that far post. But ended up wide and we're still goalless here after 13 minutes. Remember the first leg ended 2-2. a lovely crossfield ball for care oh, that's good defending from Smolinski well it looks like a really competitive game and the spectators in the Stadion Walter Erde really enjoying what they're seeing another corner then for the Schwarzgelben Inetzauner with the in swinger, and it's a decent one as well. The keeper having to come out there. Tears it forward for this throw in. In for Basong with the little layoff there, and he still managed to keep hold of it here. This is Ibrahim. Lovely skill from him, and he's regained his footing, and the shot comes in and off the line. Well, 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 absolutely brilliant defending in the end from Schalke there. They just couldn't quite get it clear. Here we can see a combination of Ibrahim and Bazong getting the chance, and then off the line there by the number two, Smolinski. So 15 minutes gone, and the best chance of the game so far is for the home side Borussia Dortmund Schalke just having to hack it clear although there's a loose pass here which has got Kutuchu is it interested it is Yildiz and then that's excellent defending up against him from Fayani. and now Fayani looking for options and he's found one to clear So it looks as though Stuttgart have won the penalty shootout in the other game over Wolfsburg as we see the shot coming in there from Kerr. Bit of a wild effort. High wide and not so handsome. So these two then playing for the privilege to face Stuttgart in the final. So we would also get pens in this game if it were to end all square. It doesn't go down to away goals. And no extra time either. 
in a way. It would be nice to see a penalty shootout, but also in a semi-final, a clear winner in the 90 minutes is always the fairest way of deciding these things. As the offside flag is raised against Kutuchu, who's getting more and more involved as the game's going on here. Field here from Fayani up towards Bizzle. Rashel. That's a poor ball again out from the back straight to Katuchu, the danger man. And he took on Osterhagen and the captain was not for letting him pass. As the ball is allowed to bounce here and Kerr gets hold of it. Could he be in? Well, the defender sliding in. Tiao. Let's have another look at it here. Well, initially the defender let the attacker get away with it. But then that's a really good recovery. Telescopic legs, as you can see from TR there. And this is another hard challenge in the centre of the park here. And it's Rachel just seems to have taken a blow to the mouth. Right for Tersi, just knocking the ball forward into midfield. The ball will come straight back at him as Katuchu just gets the break there and the shot coming in but blocked and trying to get on the rebound. Couldn't quite manage to do that and then it's another sloppy one from Ibrahim this time. Now Smolinski and he is sorted out with a really hard challenge. My word, flying in there was Fayani and now. It's all kicking off here. 20th minute and the hard challenges following one another at the moment. I think the referees is just going to have to calm them down. Well, the captain Chan is having a chat here with the referee. There we see Fayani coming in. It is a clean one, but wow. All in. And then this one as well in midfield on the break there. Well, we haven't seen any goals, but we really have seen some tough as nails defending from these under 19s. There's Hans Joachim Vasque again. Looking on in interest at his. Younger boys, hoping that a few of them will make the breakthrough to the first team. That is, of course, the idea. Schalke especially have done that really successfully down the years with the likes of Mesut Ozil coming through. So we see some ball juggling there. Lovely from Osterhage. Couldn't find Bazong though with the volley down the left wing. the field from Rima and it's well dealt with there by Havre look nicely done nice and alert oh, a better ball into midfield and then as I say that 
commentator's curse as Kerr touched it straight to the player in the blue shirt. As we're coming towards the halfway stage in this first half, it's nil-nil in this second leg of the semi-final. Of the Junior Bundesliga, the R Junior Bundesliga, I should say. So again, the clearance and up to Ibrahim here. Plenty of pace and trickery about him. He was the one who engineered that chance for Bazong a couple of minutes ago. The feeling though he's one of these players and not even his teammates know what he's going to do next possibly he doesn't know what he's going to do as he's bounding towards goal Another throw from Smolinski dealt with by Dortmund volleyed away up to Pazong just managing to get a toe end to it it's straight to Machan. Decides to take on his man and just knocking it out of play. But he's got the throw-in decision there. It did look as though he took the last touch. Rather than Osterhage. And now the ball bouncing out of play. And it's a corner now to Schalke. Uh, Sebastian Kiel. The directors of football at the club Borussia Dortmund taking this all in as well. And so far, he can be pretty proud of his boys. Here, they've put in a good shift. Although they've got some defending to do here. In comes the outswinger. Away at the far stick. And Katuchu can chase this down. 15 goals in 15 appearances for Katuchu this season. As I think the handball decision there going against Schalke's. They're also on the sideline, Lars Ricken. of the coaches on the sidelines very vocal of Norbert Ergert and there in your picture was Benjamin Hoffman as the ball just stopped from going out for a corner there there is Elgert the elder statesman and he turns around to see his team on the attack here surprisingly as the volley is fired in and a tremendous save there what an effort that was. And an equally good save as well from Havre. Look, or was it Katuchu taking this on from what looked to be an impossible height there? And it's a wonderful piece of technique. And he really did hammer it in towards goal. I think it was bouncing up as well, uncomfortably in front of Havre. Look, but he dealt with it supremely well. And with 25 minutes on the clock, he keeps it goalless. Well, fantastic. Uh, maybe that will kickstart this game here. It's been competitive in midfield rather than an attacking feast so far. And maybe that little bit of skill from Kutuchu might just inspire the other players as it's a foul coming in Bazon just a little bit too strong by the looks of it As couldn't change his direction coming in at that pace the referee seeing it that way as well not giving him a yellow card or any other warning Oh, 
lifted way up towards the halfway line and dealt with by Chan. And then Ibrahim to come straight back at him. Rachel is keeping it short and simple. And the curled ball in and that's straight to Chan pull up. Waste of an attack there from Borussia Dortmund, really. And they made progress on that right hand side. And as you can see, the stadium has been filling up more and more as time was wore on. Playing for the right to play in the final of the R Junioren Bundesliga. Up against Stuttgart, who beat Wolfsburg in the other semi on penalties. That just ended a couple of minutes ago. At the moment, no one has the advantage after the 2-2 first leg. This one deadlocked at 0-0 with 28 minutes gone. We need a goal as we might have one here as the ball is sent bouncing forwards and well ambitious that one coming in from Peña Zauna at the moment both teams playing well in midfield, but maybe just struggling in the final third as Cattuccio dribbles the ball out of play there. He's had the best moment of the match so far with that flying volley a couple of minutes ago. break here before the throw comes in from Smolinski. Cleared almost vertically there. Dortmund just about getting rid of it there in time. As we see Skibber now on the sidelines. He's the man who's going to be taking over this under-19 side next season. From Hoffman who will go into the running of the club at younger age groups. Skipper at this level, a very, very big name, you'd have to say. From Leverkusen coach. That's a poor one, really, from Misner. God. As now it's Himpo trying to make progress down the left, but he's just lost out here to Terzi, and Terzi has gone straight back at him down the other way. We haven't seen too much action down that side of the field, in fairness. I think those two seem to have just held back at the moment. A lot more coming down the middle and on this left hand side. For Dortmund on the right hand side for Schalke. And the ball is delivered in from Messner. Pinya down it was, he got his head on it. You'd have thought maybe if Bazong could have got there with his head, it might have been a different result. That's an easy interception there for Osterhage. 
nice bit of a groan going up amongst the Schalke fans as that ball was passed forward. around here no one able to really take control of it there this is a chance maybe for Biskup and he's managed to battle his way through before the recovery challenge coming in from Fiani well, that was good for the self-confidence there of the striker the man who got the 94th minute equaliser in the first leg last week. That's nice Arend to take the free kick here deep. No, in fact, he passes it to Merchan to take. Oh, it's pretty aggressive coming in. Mafayani has shown himself to be a beast at this level so far. Again, the coaches on the sidelines booming out the orders to their boys, leaving them in no doubt what they expect here. And as that ball is threaded through there from number 10 Merchan to number 9 Biscup, but just away from the striker, not quite into the channel. Been a decent game so far. Tight as you would expect in a Revere Derby. But no goals so far. Quarter asked for or given here so far. Marshall. Like, at the moment, not too much movement going on further up the field for the defensive players of Borussia Dortmund, just having to hold their positions at the moment. Being forced here just to pass the ball around at the back, which they seem pretty comfortable in doing. And Schalke at the moment will be very happy with how this is going away from home. As the ball is given away, and then the chance for Katuchu. They haven't got it clear, Dortmund. Finally, they do just manage to get it out of the penalty area. And we could see a yellow card coming in here. For that flying tackle. Sarand, who's just given a warning in the end. Just going across the run there. Of Osterhage. No harm done. Good block there on that clearance from Smolinski. Now the ball delivered into the channel here for Merchant. And his layoff though, a poor one. He's just going to try and win it back off Ibrahim, and it's Katuchu who does just that. So we've got less than 10 minutes remaining until half time. And Benjamin Hoffman, I would have thought, is a little bit anxious here about this. These boys are finding it really tough to break down Schalke at the moment. Of course, Schalke, who won the Bundesliga vest at this level, they are no mugs. But you would have expected Borussia Dortmund both to win that league and to win here today as well. At the moment, though, Schalke showing that they are at least on an even keel with their... 
rivals with their neighbours. Song there was just giving a little tug, but didn't disturb him at all. Now through to him again, little turn, and he fancies a crack here, and he gets it in. Didn't quite get a hold of it. it was a lovely turn though to create the chance for himself, and he's having to do a lot of that type of work really. He had that one header earlier on from a ball cross to him, and he also pounced upon a loose ball in the box which was created by the run of Ibrahim but other than that he's had slim pickings really and here comes the Osterhager the captain again out to the left trying to bolster the attack here and he's Helped out by Misner. And well, the ball dealt with. And now Katuchu dropping deep just to send that ball forward for Biskup. And that's again cracking defending from Fiani, but he's given it away to Katuchu. The worst person you could have possibly given it away to. And in the end, he couldn't get a clean shot away. But just for a second there, it looked as though he was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And a big let-off for Borussia Dortmund there. Well, once he was given the ball, he was herring away straight towards goal, bearing down on it. But the chance coming to nothing in the end. At the moment, a little bit loose in the passing. Borussia Dortmund. Well, it's for Yanni who made a rare mistake. And he see as he came inside, it just gave Fayani the chance to get back there. Terzi also helping him out. So six minutes remaining in this first half. Yuzis going down, winning the free kick as well. Dangerous position here. Again, dealing with that with minimum fuss. Well, the Schalke fans are begging for a goal here from their team. As in comes the set piece, and it's a poor delivery, really, giving no one a chance to get on the end of that one. of their followers are here at the Rota Erda. <laughs> well, the trainers on the sidelines absolutely booming again still. That's Hoffman you can hear. The ball is at the moment like a bit of a hot potato between these two. Neither of them able to keep it for any sustained period of time. With four minutes to go now. Remains nil nil as there's a foul given away right in front of the assistant referee there. Yes, 
Serena who gave it away and immediately you can see the Peña Zauna is interested in this one looking to cross this in be an ideal time really for Borussia Dortmund to score here just before half time as it's crossed in and successfully away by Cattuccio of all people now it's back in again from Ibrahim keeping the pressure on maybe just a shove in the back there on Cattuccio nothing given though the referee signaling him to get up as Rachel comes in and Bazong's gone down and that's got to be a penalty and it's been given well, that was really, really rash on Bazong. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Absolutely no need for that. And Schalke have got through a lot of good work in this first half. And then a moment of stupidity there from Chan. First of all, that was really good. Second of all, not so good. Just diving in. He had no hope of getting the ball off Bazong there. And it's a penalty. And it's the third penalty of this tie between these two in the semi-final. Oh, Rachel missed in the first leg and then got the rebound. But this time he tucks it into the corner. 1-0 Dortmund. Advantage. BVB. And the Schwarzgelben might well think that they have got a foot in the final here. Up against Stuttgart. And it all comes from that penalty. From Raschel. And it was as easy as you like. As I said, he missed. Or it was saved rather by Champolat in the first leg. And he tucked home the rebound this time. Didn't need a second bite of the cherry. There we are, 43rd minute, Tobias Raschel. Well, that is, as I mentioned earlier, brilliant time for Dortmund to score psychologically. They can go in with their tails up. If they can hold on for the remaining 90 seconds or so here, I can't imagine too much time added on by the referee. But that Rachel penalty is the difference between the two. As Himpel there just trying to get onto that bouncing ball down the left. Have a look though, getting there first. And now I think that Dortmund are just going to try and hold on to possession here. See it out until half time. Lovely run forward from Osterhager. And it's going to be a very interesting second half now. Schalke will have to go immediately on the attack. To try and at least take it to penalties by getting the equaliser. Remember they showed great heart in the first leg to come back to make it 2-2. Deep into stoppage time as Bazong here. Ford, he just had a chance to turn on it and it's a great tackle to get it away from him we are into time added on at the end of the first half now and the half time whistle goes straight away so it is that late penalty in the 43rd minute that gives Borussia Dortmund the lead at half time by 1-0 it was Raschel who converted it but join us in about 15 minutes or so to see if Schalke can come back here
welcome back to the second half of this Are You Your and Bundesliga semi final, second leg at the Stadion Rolte Erde in the shadow of the Signal Iduna Park in Dortmund. It is Borussia Dortmund under 19s versus Schalke under 19s, the mini Revere Derby. And it's Borussia Dortmund who have got their noses ahead at half time by one goal to nil. A late penalty in that first half in the 43rd minute by the midfielder. Rachel scored after Basong was fouled by Chan, the captain of Schalke. And, well, I don't know if it's a deserved lead or not, really. Schalke certainly had the better of the defending. And they had their chances through the likes of Kutuchu with a fantastic athletic volley from outside the box. And Borussia Dortmund looks a little bit shaky in defence and a sloppy in midfield but they do have the lead and of course we need a winner tonight as the first leg ended all square 2-2 last week if it's another draw then we go straight into penalties so let's see what this second 45 minutes brings for us really looking forward to this one as I'm sure they're from here Norbert Elgert's the Schalke coach will be wanting his players just to go for broke. They may as well. At stake, a place in the final against Stuttgart, who beat Wolfsburg on penalties earlier this evening. And away we go. It is Schalke in the blue and white strip to get us underway again. And they'll be looking to their main man, Kutuchu, to score for them to create something as well. Of course, it did take them until the 94th minute in the first game between these two to level matters. That's a ball sprayed forward here by Arendt. And I don't think that, that any changes have been made as far as I'm aware. This is Marchand. Nice trickery from him. Now the ball clipped in towards the penalty spot and hacked away. Now maybe the chance to counter. This is what Borussia Dortmund will be looking for. As Lozong thought that he might have just been away there. And well, it's been a high octane first minute to this second half. Terzi there just brought down by Yildiz. And that will look who made a couple of decent saves in the first half. And there in your picture is Bazong. The man in the starting lineup tonight for the top scorer Aidenal, who's on the bench. So far, he has impressed Bazong with his willingness to just take on the players with his power. Certainly a physical match for anyone at this age level, you'd have to think. Lovely little ball to Ibrahim, tapping it back for Pena, Zauna, and now Rashel, the goal scorer, to Pena, Zauna again, trying some trickery on the edge of the box there, and Chan just stepping in and coming away with the ball. Schalke captain, the man who gave away the penalty for his only slack bit of defending in that entire first half, and looks as though Kutuchu is just suggesting there's an elbow in there somewhere well, he's asking a bit much if he wants an elbow for that from Miss Nup. it's a free kick for sure but no more than that Oh, 
ball up the field here from Schalke from that free kick. Katuchu closing in on the nod down there. Almost making something out of that. And it looks as though Schalke are just going to go for broke here. As I suggested, they might. They need to get Biscop in the game a little bit more. As the shot comes in from Katuchu. He just seems to be everywhere, the man. You can see why he's one of the biggest talents in the Schalke ranks at this age group. And why he has experience of being in with the senior men's team. A long clearance upfield from Champola. And Rachel can pick this up. And control midfield. And Osterhager may have their work cut out here. It's a very keen Schalke side. Coming up towards five minutes played in the second half. Constant noise on the sidelines from the coach Norbert Algert. These boys are trying to respond here with a shot from range. That one coming in, I think, from our end. But well, over the bar in the end. No problem for have a look. So still that penalty coming towards the end of the first half, the difference between these two. Field. That seems to be something that he specialises in. We haven't seen that kind of clearance from the Dortmund keeper. Have a look, really. Tends to keep it shorter. As it looks as though Misner is down here. Well, it's a hard one up against Kutuchu. A really heavy landing for the left back. I think he should be okay to continue, just a bit winded perhaps. Let's have another look at it here. Where's well, a competitive duel between those two in the air? And it was Mesner who came off worse for sure. Should be okay. Rishka, the new technical director of Schalke. Mike Buskins as well. Here, the former Schalke coach. So, as I said earlier, all of the big names are here for this under 19 semi in the R Junioren Bundesliga. They don't just ignore the youth football at their clubs, they also do get involved. I'm sure that the young players. Love the fact that the club legends do turn up to their matches. Of course, it's the Revere Derby. It's a big one 
at whatever age group you're talking about as there's a trip there from Katuchu coming in on Ibrahim <laughs> he looks completely baffled by the decision and indeed I think while the player has stayed down in fact sorry it's Osterhage who's the man whose ankles eclipsed Still 1 0 Dortmund. There's no real chances of note in this second half as yet to extend that for Dortmund. As there's another heavy challenge coming in, and the Dortmund player has stayed down again. I think it was Kutuchu involved there too. Yellow card for Rachel, the goal scorer. Perhaps diving in a little bit too hard here. So look, it's the loss of control there and then diving in, yes, to try and win it back again. You can see their 54th minute. Yellow card for Rachel. And Schalke getting straight on with it. No time to waste here. Ten minutes into the second half, and that's great covering there from Osterhage. Reading the game really well. In both directions, in fact. As Bazong now is wrestled to the ground. And that's gone the other way. That's an interesting decision from the referee. Uh, it's just a bit of pushing and shoving. Ibrahim getting a warning about his conduct. Really starting to see some needle in this Revere derby now. And how that is a foul by Busog, I have got absolutely no idea. He's the man in possession and he's being pulled back by Tiao the whole time. He goes down and sure, yeah, he catches him. Tiao on the way down, but he's being pulled. Very interesting from the referee there. As Tiao gets the ball away this time. And it's given away to Osterhage, who is on the run here, driving through midfield. Terrific run. And he's brought down by Merchant. Well, at the moment, we're seeing a lot of free kicks being given away. And this one is in a very, very dangerous position. And now they'll be wondering where Aydinel is. He scored from this kind of position in the first leg. See the Merchan now. When the hands go up, something has happened. You know it. And who's going to take this one? Well, it looks as though Pena Zauna and Osterhage both fancy this. And Champola might be called into action again here. Let's see. Well, either of these players have got up their sleeves here as it comes in and it's a terrific free kick absolutely brilliant from Peña Zauna 58th minute and that is out of the top draw absolutely no chance for the goalkeeper Champel at there Right into the corner. Brilliant free kick. Whoa. He's got the positioning and the power to send that home over the wall. And he gets it back down as well. And the keeper is absolutely grasping at thin air there. Nothing that he can do about that. No blame at all. So Borussia Dortmund then, without being too fantastic in open play, have scored from a penalty in a free kick. Uh, Rachel and Pinotauna, respectively. And they are 
well in control now of this semi-final second leg. Looks as though they will be on their way through to the final against Stuttgart. Remember that comes on the 2nd of June in the afternoon. As the ball is delivered across the six-yard area, Schalke looking to make an immediate reply here. But in the meantime, Dortmund might be thinking that they could help themselves to a third on the counter. As it's Kier coming forward, and he does really well there to battle with the defender, Chan. Goes out for the goal kick, but pinning back the defender there. And it looks as though there's going to be a change here with Kaporos coming on for Yildiz. Yildiz, who has been rather quiet. So it looks as though they're going to have a bit of a shift around there. It's not a like-for-like -like replacement as Dortmund also making their first change. be Gurkan who is coming on for Misner. Well, we saw Misner with that heavy landing earlier on. And perhaps that has got something to do with it. He does look a little bit dazed. So it is a like-for-like -like replacement as Peña Zauna is away again here suddenly. And he sends it inches wide. Well, Schalke in all kinds of trouble there on the hour mark. Peña Town are much sharper than they were after the restart, after those two changes. And almost finding themselves 3-0 down. Well, that would have well and truly been that. Three down after an hour. It would be very difficult for them to recover from that one. But as it stands, only two. Kertuchu then. They'll be looking for him as the shot does come in in the end. Well, it was Machan who had the chance there. High pace at the moment. Both sets of players really going for this one. Borussia Dortmund not resting on their laurels. They know that the likes of Kutuchu and Biscup can hurt them. We saw Biscup hurt them as well last week. They need to be focused in this final half an hour. And Schalke, well, they can just throw the kitchen sink now at Borussia Dortmund. They may as well go for it. The ball is delivered safely here. Back to have a look. Yanni. Had a decent first half. We haven't seen too much of him in this second half. Haven't really needed to. Schalke haven't threatened in quite the same way. And Ibrahim. Okay. the foul so it looks as though Misner needed an ice pack on his face so he certainly did pick up something in that clash with Kutuchu 
as it looks as though we're just going to have a little drinks break here for the guys. This was the chance from Pina Tauna after the restart from the substitutions that we saw. We saw a superb free kick from Pena Tauna. That has lit up the road to Erda. Absolutely fantastic to make it 2-0 and a chance then for the coaches to grab hold of their players. And set out the tactical idea for the remaining 26 minutes or so. A lot of work for Schalke to do. They have played pretty well actually in open play, perhaps better than Dortmund even. Creating more chances at least, but it's Dortmund who've had that clinical edge scoring a penalty at the end of the first half and that free kick from Peña Tauna the advantage is played on here and this is Gurkhan the substitute for Misna 65 minutes on the clock here. Well, Borussia Dortmund play their cards right here. They should be able to just cruise into the final. 2 0 up, of course. They found themselves a goal to the goods on two occasions in the first leg and were pegged back each time, but now they've got much more of a cushion. Zerima there, just a bit of a heavy touch, but he got away with it. Now, Rostahage. Now, Knob. Tears it forward for Ibrahim. Have a look. Yanni out to Terzi. Looks as though they're really trying to slow down the pace of the game here, Borussia Dortmund. Nice and professional performance. You don't need to panic about this at all. As it would appear that. Schalke going to make another change here. Aydin is stripped and ready to go. Mr. Hager keeping the game, just ticking over in midfield. And it's broken here for Ibrahim. Gets to the byline, delivers it across. It's a driven one. And then as it's hammered back in, it's over the bar. Gughan it was. Trying the volley with his left foot there. Getting involved in the attack. But not finding the target. Oh, still no opportunity for Aydin. And also Barnes as well. Looks as though he's going to come on. There's a hard challenge coming in. Dear, oh dear. From the big man himself, Bazong. I don't think he really meant it in an aggressive way. That's just how he's built. Oh, that's lovely. Play here from Raschel. Ball in field and lovely interplay. Back to Raschel again. And Bazonga just held his run there. I think he thought he could have gone offside had he started earlier. As we're midway through the second half here. And it's Borussia Dortmund in control of their own destiny. At the moment, they would be cruising through to the final of the Ar Junioren 
Bundesliga as it looks as though Kutuchu is down and needs treatment. And it looks as though it's a back injury for him. Of course, he was the one who caused the injury to Misner earlier on. Just see Norbert Elgert having his say with the young players here, grabbing them at every opportunity. And it looks as though Rima is one player who will be coming off for Schalke. He was left back. So Kaparos. Oh, sorry, Barnes coming on for him. The South African player. And Biscop, the other player coming off. So the man who grabbed the equaliser deep into stoppage time in the first match is off, and Aydin is on. So let's have a look at how these changes for Schalke will affect them. That's the third and final change as the shot rains in here from the sub ID. And the whistle had already gone, unfortunately, as it was a terrific finish into the corner. Smashing home on the turn. But the referee seeing an infringement before the shot even took place. Let's have a look. It's a tremendous piece of control in the first place then the handball unfortunately but he drives it low into the corner and Havrilouk didn't know that the whistle had gone and you could see he was stretching all the way to try and keep that out and couldn't 20 minutes to go and rather unlucky really there for Aydin that the ball struck his hand don't think he exactly meant it but certainly the referee correct to blow up for that one. It was control that needed to be made with the hand if he was to get the chance, and that's why the referee decided to go the way of Borussia Dortmund. As Hoffman is on the sidelines and he's furious with that decision not going away of his team. We may well see a grandstand finish here in the last 19 minutes from Schalke. Oh, Raschel, score of the penalty in the first half and all off the ball there. Pazong just going down, getting nothing though for his troubles. He's already got well involved in this game. And Kaparos just losing out there. Rachel stepping in. Doing his best there to get back again. Merchan to the edge of the box. Laying it off here for another sub Barnes. Getting the shot in, but it was well blocked by Borussia Dortmund. It might well be one-way traffic for the last 18 minutes here Borussia Dortmund already getting through their fair share of defending and the shot raining in and into the side netting there well they're getting closer here Schalke they're certainly having the attempts it was Kutuchu on that occasion Well, there is still belief amongst the Blues here, the Royal Blues. They haven't let their heads drop at all, despite being 2-0 down to local rivals Borussia Dortmund. The penalty at the end of the first half, making a big difference for Borussia Dortmund, I think. 
And then that free kick, superb from Peña Zauna. It had placement, it had power, it had everything. Beating the keeper all ends up. It looks as though Dortmund are going to make another change here. It's been the second of the game. Schalke have already rolled the dice here. With all three subs. Although there are two subs getting ready, in fact, so maybe it's going to be a double change. into the corner here for Schalke. Uh, nice trickery, but that will be easy for Fayani to get clear. Sarida so Kadra is one player waiting to come on. So Kiet is coming off. Then for Kier, pretty much a straight swap. With 15 minutes to go, it's a chance for Kadra to impress. Kier's coming off as slowly as possible. We've seen that before in the more senior ranks. You can see a completely different build between those two players. Kadra lacking oh, 10 centimetres or so. On the player he's replacing. Challenge coming in there unfairly, says the referee from our end. moment Borussia Dortmund looking relatively comfortable Schalke have been putting on the pressure but not too much work for this man have a look to do he was beaten by a shot from sub Aydin but Aydin had handballed in the build-up there's the attacker there just tugging back Raschel but Raschel coming away with the ball. I want to give it away in that position though. Having dribbled all the way across goal. And then, well, that was slightly silly from Raschel, I've got to say. Giving away that free kick just outside the box. There was no need for him to dribble that far. And then he came in hard on Merchan. And this could be a difficult one for that man to deal with here we saw a clever free kick earlier on from Schalke Chan taking it on it was from the other side of the box and perhaps Kutuchu might do the same well I think he was trying it didn't come off and as that shot came in I think you could just see a defender in the wall going down injured let's have a look here just missing it in the replay there So, yeah, the player is still down here. I think it's Ibrahim. Manu! 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 Just a little bit of cramp here. Coming towards the end of this game. And another opportunity for the coaches to get hold of the players. Especially Norbert Elgert taking that opportunity with his team trailing as Ibrahim is helped to his feet here by the physio and he's just limping off but might be okay to continue 
did seem slightly uncomfortable as he went to ground as that free kick was fired in. And note the change being signalled by the physio there. So they are going to have to make this last change then. And it's going to be Emmanuel Ferrai who's coming on for him. So a pretty much straight swap as well, an attacker for an attacker. Maybe he can make use of some of the gaps at the back that Schalke might leave in this last 10 minutes or so. being the most entertaining match in the world. We have had a couple of incidents of notes, particularly that free kick from Peña Zauna, which at the moment looks to have given Borussia Dortmund the cushion. In the first half, we also saw an excellent effort from the Schalke attacker Kutuchu, who for me, it just seems as though there's a little bit too much responsibility on him to create and score. They're always looking for him. He's the one. And perhaps he could do with a little bit more support from the cast around him. And this is Aydin, who certainly does look as though he could support his teammate in attack. Tazzy upfield. And Borussia Dortmund from here will surely be confident of taking this win. It's not the narrow lead that they had in the first leg. They were 2 1 up at this point in the return. And had it slipped deep into time added on. Can't really see them doing that here. But then. When it comes to these playoff situations, a semi final, meaning that you get to the final against Stuttgart. You never know. Grandstand finish awaits us, perhaps, from Schalke, as I mentioned. It's going to take something special, I think, for them to break through. in deep into the corner here and it's Cadro who comes away with it and on to Ferrai the two substitutes linking up here and a lot of space suddenly opens up for them and a complete lack of communication in the end and they couldn't get the shot away between them but that was very promising for Borussia Dortmund that those two are racing up that right hand side Looking to make it 3-0 and to finish this game off. Now Barnes. Deep cross in. Easily headed away. Tottenham can see that coming all the way. It's another aerial challenge coming in, but the throwing given to Schalke. Pinatowna not arguing with it, and then the throwing comes in, and that will be a goal kick. And for Yanni, just with the low five there, with have a look. And certainly, players who've impressed me today for 
Dorman would be Feyani, Rachel Osterhage, and Bazong. Pena Zauna has rather been on the fringes of the game in open play, but he's had one or two moments of magic, including that free kick. As for Schalke, well, Smolinski in the first half was getting up and down the right hand side. Chan was commanding until he gave away the penalty at the end of the first half. Katuchu, as I said earlier, seems to me to have the weight of the world on his shoulders when it comes to creating for his team, unfortunately for them. And a couple of fine talents amongst these two squads. Could well make it in the professional game. Might have to move on, as so often. To really make it, but let's see as Peña Zauna takes a short corner to Kadra, gets it back from the taker as well. And then for Rashel, and I think he wanted to play the one two there with his captain Osterhage. Osterhage had other, uh, other ideas as there's a little bit of pushing and shoving going on, and Osterhage has got himself into the book here with five minutes to go cheeky little smile from him well he knew what he was doing here against the number 10 Merchan well, absolutely correct decision from the referee there he's all over the top of the attacker you can see taking one for the team though the captain want to let the attacker get away from him with only five minutes to go in the game so that's a lovely take from Katuchu but he couldn't find the cross to live up to that touch and there's now Bazong hasn't really been able to hold up the ball as well as he did in the first half and he's dived in again there trying to win it back and again, there's some pushing and shoving as the atmosphere just taking a turn for the worse here in the Revere Derby. Well, it's not only in the seniors where it matters most. Also at this under-19 level, these guys can feel from the sidelines how much it means to the fans. And it's Bazog who is in the yellow Sorry, in the book this time. So let's have a look here as he goes diving in on the defender Smolinski. Well, they can appeal that the ball was caught, but I don't think it was at all. So another change then for Schalke. Coming off. And Chistich, man, coming on. Fresh legs. Only three and a half minutes to go. So in goes the deep free kick. Bit of head tennis. And finally, the referee seeing an infringement. And it's a free kick for. Borussia Dortmund just to let the pressure get off as it looks as though Bezong is going to be withdrawn here there's a little bit of afters as well by the sounds of it the, we can't quite see from here but Bezong finally being allowed to come off here and it's Emre Aydinel the top scorer for Borussia Dortmund who comes home with three minutes to go. And you wouldn't put it past him to score another. He's that kind of guy. He's very, very sharp. And there's another tug back and well, this game has become rather bitty coming towards the end. 
Playing into the hands of Borussia Dortmund, though, who have the 2-0 lead. And, well, Aidanelli has only just come on. And he's been booked immediately for trying to block the free kick there. Not retreating. Well, they'll accept that, though. Especially if they keep this 2-0 lead. And the ball is down the field here. Coming up towards the last minute. And there may well be three, four, even five minutes like in the first leg. Added on at the end here. Because of a couple of afters, a couple of injuries as well. And four minutes have been added. That's what we're hearing, but we're just waiting for the confirmation. Ulster Hager. It's away now, Rachel. Rachel, the man who set his team on victory road, as it would appear, unless we see some really, really late drama from Schalke. as though Borussia Dortmund are comfortably going to go through to the final of the R Junioren Bundesliga where they will face Stuttgart on the 2nd of June and there we can see the Schalke coach there Norbert Elgert having his say again Clever play there from Rashl again. He does impress me, I must say. The more you see him, the more you can see why he's so highly rated, as it is indeed four minutes confirmed by the fourth official. As Barnes tries to get free down the right-hand side. Fed in there for Kaparos. Kutuchu looking for him immediately, and that's well won back there by the number 14, Ferrai. Up for Kadra. Kadra pushing the ball ahead of him. He fancies a shot here. And he did get one in, but it was straight down the middle and easy for Champola to take. There's a lovely little flick on around the corner there. And away. Good work by Knorp. Say that Knorp doesn't really look as though he's broken sweat in the game. It's been one of those games for the defender. He may not have really stood out, but he's done his job with the minimum of fuss. As the corners come in here and again the head tennis and away. We're 90 seconds into the four minutes of time added on. And Borussia Dortmund within touching distance of the final. And they will love this, beating their local rivals in the Revere Derby as well. So the final there then will be played in Gross Asbach. As there's another booking in this game, yet again, Terzi this time. Suffering the wrath of the referee. Just losing the flight of the ball. And then the run of the player, Merchan. Well, maybe Borussia Dortmund will be a little bit nervous here, given the way that the first leg ended. As... Kutuchu stands over this free kick. What's he going to do? He's going to go for goal. And it's a terrific save. Absolutely wonderful from Hatvra. Look, I would have to say he deserves to keep a clean sheet tonight as the next shot comes in. That could be the last effort as well from Schalke. Kaparos. And you can see the clenched fist there from the goalkeeper Hatvra. Look. Doing his job really well there, keeping the clean sheet so far. 
Well, his team have certainly needed him at times here to keep a cool head. It has by far not been an easy match for Borussia Dortmund at all. They've got the 2-0 win. And they deserve it for just having that cold clinical edge, which Schalke seems to have not had. However, Schalke at times really putting the pressure on the home side. Not too much between these two at all at this level. As Idenel is through. Can he finish it off? It's saved with the legs that of Champola. But there you can see the quality that he has with the crossover run, first of all, past the defender so that the defender couldn't bring him down. And second of all, getting the shot in on target, low and hard. But well de dealt with by Champolat. Four minutes have been played here, but Schalke with one last attack. And then the final whistle goes, and there are massive celebrations on the field for the Borussia Dortmund players as they are into the final of the R Junior Bundesliga with a 2-0 win over local rival Schalke. Hashels with a pen before half-time and Peña Zimmer with a world-class free kick in the second half. Absolutely terrific. And they will play the final on the 2nd of June against Stuttgart. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening for that under-19 game. Hope you can join us for the final then. Until then, from me, it is bye-bye.